Welcome everyone to the Water Pollution Control Authority meeting of this Octo uh, uh, yeah, October, October 19th is what today's date is. Uh, we've posted an, an agenda online. Are there any proposed changes? Uh, seeing none, we'll proceed with the agenda in front of us. The first item tonight are the bills and communications, uh, which is the approval of the September 21st, 2022 regular meeting minutes that Joe and Sheila have been kind enough to work up for us. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion from Second. Chris. Second from Tom. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Ron abstained and covered a lot of ground last month. The, main, the minutes were terrific. Thank you, guys. Um, next item, we have um, the sewer adjustments. We have four tonight that all appear to be leaks. Uh, Joe has kindly, um, I don't want to say volunteered, but uh, I asked Joe to run point on these because he does such a fine job. And so I'm going to turn it over to Joe on these four. Okay, so on, on the very first one, on the new business, 931 Fairfield Beach Road, I'm going to motion uh, to authorize the Fairfield tax collector to adjust the 2021 sewer use bill for 931 Fairfield Beach Road to $509.57, which represents the average bill of the average uh, client of the sewer system. Uh, I'll wait until you open it up for discussion, Mr. Chair, and then we could discuss it. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second from Chris. Comments, questions? Okay, just let me make two statements and then uh, we'll go from there. The last two year billing for this home was at a minimum of 150, was at a minimum of $150 each year. Uh, this year we actually billed them for 3,084 and it turns out the bill was based on our January 2022 spike in their water usage. One month, Joe? That was the uh, one month. Okay. I mean, it, the, the, two, the, the half a month ahead of it was also appeared high based on history, okay. but then uh, it dropped back off after it was uh, okay. repaired. Uh, the reason I am recommending, and this is interesting, the reason I'm recommending an average bill as versus going back, the last two years was minimum 150, is I've recognized that the winter months for this particular house have been close to zero, relatively very low, and then the other months, May through October, seem to be normal months. So I am looking at this house thinking they're out in Florida for the six months that we calculate their bill, but they do have an average bill for the rest of the month. And we've never picked this up before. They've been get paying the minimum bill for the last two years. Yeah, no, I noticed and, that. That's good, good catch. And that's the rationale. Yeah, that makes sense. And without anybody here, the customer is not here, I can't right. Right. ask them. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. Great point, Joe. Mm -hmm. That's that's why you're the you're the guy for this, really. One hundred percent. Okay. Oh, All yeah. <laughs> All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 480 Hulls Highway. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the Fairfield tax collector to adjust the 2021 sewer usage bill for 480 Holes Highway to the average of the prior two years, which I calculate to be $846.20. For a second before I... Second. Second from Chris, comments, questions? Okay, and uh, basically, again, a water leak uh, and evidenced by a bill that they uh, had a problem with their water main between the meter and the house. That's the rationale for the adjustment. Yeah, 
That was a big bill. Joe, just to follow, follow your math, I see I see the two prior years, uh, and, and was there an uplift of any kind on top of that? Because the average, I get eight, uh, just under eight eight hundred uh, dollars for as an average. Yeah, uh, the five percent increase. Okay, so so it's the last two five. years prior use plus uh, our increase of five percent. Eight thirty six oh one. Eight forty six twenty is what I got. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I'm willing to go with the ten dollars either way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Calculus. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm make sure I'm just following the math. I'm good with yeah, that. Yeah. That's that's what it was. The usage of the last average usage of the last two years times the five percent uptick in the oh, rate good. this year. Okay. Yeah, I think that's solid solid an analysis. Okay, let's uh, bring it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Let's be unanimous. Okay. Um, Next up is 3915 Park Avenue, Unit 58. Yeah, again, another little different. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the Fairfield Tax Collector to adjust the 2021 sewer use bill for 3915 Park Avenue to equal the prior year sewer bill of $1,115.04. Second. Second. Chris leading the league in seconds tonight. <laughs> and, and again, for discussion, um, we, we only have one year of current resident use. Prior to that, there was a different uh, owner. And unfortunately, the homeowner's not here. I'd like to know if they've had a difference in number of people in the house or everything, but we're not going to have that. So I'm just saying, let's make it last year's bill. Yeah. Okay. That's the right. And, 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 and so the, the uplift went into effect in, uh, with, with, uh, with the 2020 bill uh, prior, to, prior to the uplift or subsequent to the uplift? The no, that was uh, prior to. Okay. I, I didn't raise it to 5% if that's what you're that's, asking. That's what I'm I, I just I just left it flat. Okay. Because I didn't have any idea of what the usage was and the new new homeowner. Looks like a new homeowner anyway from, sure. the, from the documentation. Right. So I didn't do any. I just gave her the same bill as last year. Yeah, that's all you have to hang your hat on. That's, yeah. that's what the rationale All right. Is. Understood. Yeah. Seems like a lot of water for a condo unit, but we'll... we'll... It, it does. It does. We'll, uh, we'll put, defer to the homeowner if they want to provide more uh, clarification on that. Um, yeah, and again, it was a leak, and she had it fixed, it looks like. So, okay. All in favor? That's, that's, okay. Double. Looks to be unanimous. Um, and then we have 268 Berkeley. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the Fairfield Tax Collector to adjust, <coughs> excuse me, adjust the 2021 sewer use bill for 268 Berkeley Road to $707.11, which represents the prior year's water usage times the current year's rate. And again, uh, oh, I'll wait until the second. I'll wait until the discussion. Yeah. Second. A second from Matt. I'm giving Matt that. And again, the only thing I'll say I'll say about this was that the toilet valve fix was done in April 2022. So the usage after that is consistent. Hence that's why I made I'm recommending this adjustment. Okay, I'll enter. So what's your number? Seven oh seven eleven. Okay. Good. Okay, seven oh seven eleven. Let's have a vote on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Looks to be unanimous. All right, Joe, you saved us a lot yeah, of more? time tonight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so did Dave. Okay, so moving on on new business, we have to hear, consider, and act on a request for funding, environmental specs, and design services for time bond for the East Truck. Um, Sewer totaling 7,500. I'm going to defer to John Bodie on. I'm going to, I'm going to 
I'm going to pass it right to Mega. Yeah, for, uh, I'd just like to introduce Mega, Jane, hey, from you? Engineering to the Commission, and uh, say hello to everybody. Hi. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, not a so, problem. Okay. So just to, uh, Bill was supposed to be here, but right. he is in the other conservation meeting, so I will try my best to cover as much. So this phase, is, as you may know, uh, do you have this upcoming project uh, agenda? Uh, I, 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 I added it in. Yes. So this, so this is a phase one, just, uh, sorry, phase two, just to introduce there are two phases of East Strong Line, not to get confused. Uh, so tie and bond one is the phase two, which is from Kenar to post uh, sewer line um, uh, alternative route. Uh, this is $7,500 is for tie and bond for environmental services. They will just want to know if there is unclassified soil, so they will be doing the boring for that location. So that is separate company that will be performing an environmental services uh, for that location. So that's $7,500. So that, that's... And, and it is broken down in the documentation I sent. 500 for coordination and management, 2,000 for soil and groundwater management report, 2,500 for drawings, and 2,500 for technical specifications. And these are for the borings to see the, and if there's any suitable soils or, or contaminated soils? Uh, suitable soils, most. Then they're going to design. Yes, okay. so suitable soil basically if it's organic soil, soft soil, clay soils, we cannot do uh, construction over those soils, or they may have to remove that soil uh, okay. to 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 make it constructible. And, and are what these? Oh, oh, and are these borings going to give enough information for to the bidder to get a good yes. bid? Yes. That's, uh, is that good for just tie and bond and everyone thinks so, so we don't have to have them back? Yeah, so tie and bond is just environmental specific, uh, licensed environmental firm uh, that yep. we are hiring. They will give this, this data to Cardinal, which will be designing for town, and they will be using that data to uh, determine what kind of foundation should be going and, uh, under the... And tie what are the drawing and specs that tie and bond are providing? Drawings and specs. Uh, yeah. Basically, they will be only environmental specifications, like based on the uh, on the soil conditions and the boring logs. They will be providing us. I guess more specifically, my question: What is their drawings and specs related to? Like, is it a specific? So, I mean, I, I'm going down a little bit of a tangent here, but looking at Cardinals stuff, it said yes. per a uh, meeting we opted not to do trench list, and that's news to me. I didn't realize we ever gave up on that. Uh, for the trench list? Yeah. Um, and so if they're doing, if they're putting together drawings and specs based on trenching, and so like they're coming up with shoring design and that kind of stuff, what if we don't need that if we, if Cardinal's wrong and that we actually are still considering trench list? So as I'm understanding your question, you're saying that let's say what what the soil dictates us, you may go from trench list to any other method of doing it. Um, that's a good question. Now, that's what the foundation technically will determine. I don't know what the, uh, the soil conditions will dictate us, but I don't think we will, uh, what, if trench list was uh, proposed, we will stick to the trench list uh, one. It shouldn't, it shouldn't impact uh, the type of foundation that will be, you know, right. if there are deep, uh, for example, let's put on the conservative side, if this is a deep foundation where the piles are going deeper, uh, let's say 20 feet deeper, 30 feet deeper, uh, that shouldn't dictate the method of uh, doing uh, this. That was just a way of proposing uh, their way we go trenchless or we go bursting the pipe or we go micro tunneling. There, there are five different options, but those options doesn't dictate um, okay. that. So shouldn't be an issue. I guess my thought, so I mean, I understand this is an environmental boring, yes. not a geotechnical. This is more. If we need geotechnical borings, then should we be doing those two in conjunction for? cost savings purposes versus 
uh, well, this is saying environmental specification. Uh, this should also be involving geotechnical investigation because it's a soil soil testing. They will be uh, they will be doing. But you're right. Uh, it could be. I will have to look into the specifications very clearly. But just okay. from the logical point of view, it could be uh, as I've seen the environmental specifications. It could be like tie and bond specifically goes and test the soil, take the samples, give it to the testing agencies, and they will test what kind of soil uh, come out to be. And, and the geotechnical aspect is like when you're preparing like in scale boring, that could be just Cardinal doing it, not tie and bond. So okay. that, that should be. Uh, okay. Um, there's one more question because I'm just kind of going through the Cardinal engineering, um, I guess your backup for that. And on the bottom there, second page, because you have like a couple of lines up to pure, it, you have the $7,500. This estimate uh, does not include for tie and bond to prepare plans and are, this is for, to, to this is the $7,500 for the, for the environmental uh, borings. And then right below that, you have a question mark and it says the peer review recommended additional deep soil borings and geotechnical analysis to be performed. Yes. Are we asking for that money now too? Uh, Is this going to be in conjunction with the uh, borings? Yeah, I mean, it's related, yeah. So it says 5,000, 10,000, so we are estimating around 15,000 with analysis, yes. But would this, would the, uh, would the soil boring company be performing these also when they're out? As they a should. Cost savings. Yes. I mean, so. So there are two different things. Yeah, we've got. Yeah. And we have two There's different, two different consulting so, firms trying to do basically the same thing. The same. It seems like a waste. Yeah. Like, so, can we go to tie and bond and ask so, if, in addition to the environmental, they can do deep boring? Yes. So okay. Okay. coordinate okay. with Cardinal. Cardinal. What, what do you, what I don't do you know guys need? need for, yeah. Well, I think we can keep them out of it entirely and go straight to tie and bond. Okay. But I would think that we could do all of it. At once, whatever we need yeah, from everyone. Yeah. yeah. So just to be clear, now I'm reading this. Uh, going there, are two aspects. One is the environmental, specifically right. uh, yeah. looking at what kind of soil we are hitting, as well as uh, the contaminated soil and groundwater. We will be testing that as well. Right. right? But that is where Ty and Bond will be preparing, uh, doing the samplings for us, mm -hmm. sending to the testing agencies, as well as providing the specifications for the contractor if we encounter some. Bar, uh, unsuitable soil or contaminated soil, then there are special permits and right. we have to go to that route. So that's why tie and bond uh, environmental license we have to hire. Understood. So that's what we're doing. And then we are also peer review recommending additional deep. That's where the geotechnical investigation right. is coming and geotechnical analysis uh, of predicting the suitability of the foundation, what kind of foundation we will, is it shallow or deep? Of right. Foundation. Exactly. But my point is, so I think we put that request in through Cardinal, and I don't see a reason to do that if we've got Ty and Bond doing boring, so uh, or at least without shopping it. At least, like tell Ty and Bond, you guys yes. are going out there with a the drill and bore. Yes. Go and take. How much more is it to do the deep ones and do the geotechnical? Ones? Right. Versus Cardinal, if you're you do deep, deep. And you do shallow. It doesn't make any. So that is right. That could be tie and bond. Here doesn't specify to me which company right. is doing this work. That's right. a question mark. Uh, we can, but yeah, uh, they are estimating fifteen thousand dollars for just doing that soil geotechnical investigation. Right. So that's a cost that we would be ending up with seventy five hundred estimation around right. fifteen. But I think in that situation we'd be paying for two different mobilizations and. I mean, I could see there potentially being some efficiencies of getting all the borings through one contractor at the same time. Yes, yeah. yes. So, yeah, we can do that. It's not very specified which company right. is hiring for geotechnical one. But it doesn't say for Cardinal. Definitely Cardinal is up for designing. So I'm assuming it's high and bond. And, uh... can, let me ask a more macro question, which is... <laughs> What's the decision? Who's steering the process here, and, and what's the decision-making process on the on the front line for uh, the direction these projects are going and the immediate next steps? 
Who's who's on that who's on that kind of committee? Good decision making. Like who, who's, of, who's sitting around the table deciding that Cardinal's going to do this and we're not going to do trenchless, for instance? Is that just I'm just curious who's 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 at that table having that discussion? So definitely engineering. Uh, engineering department with Bill Hurley and okay. WPCM working in a team to decide this. Uh, okay, so, so Bill Hurley, who, who's there from the WPCA? John Bodie is here with us. But okay. John, were you on So I don't think I was on that July 21st meeting that Cardinal's email references. I mean, the first sentence in this letter is concerning to me. It says, as discussed at the Zoom meeting on 7-21-22, the town has decided not to consider the trenchless methods or any other alternate alternate design mentioned in the right Pierce peer review report. I think I never remember having any conversation. I think that them. came from John Marsilio because this thing has been looming since 2014, 2015. And every time we try and get to a point where we're going to push forward, well, what about this? What are we going to do? So it's money after money, delay after delay. Yeah. We're going from. Four million to five million. We're probably over ten million. Mm -hmm. So, but that's because we haven't actually considered the alternate. So, I mean, I so back six months ago, I had said maybe even longer. I reached out to one of my colleagues who suggested that we need deep borings to bet whether or not trenchless is an option. But if yeah. trenchless is an option, it would save a considerable amount of money on this project, which Wright Pierce's peer review report had said that whatever it was two years ago. And so, why have we still not gotten these deep borings? And I mean, and then why are we trying to eliminate the alternate alternate of doing trenchless without even getting those borings? I like, can't. I can't answer that. It's, I've mean, gotten a quote for fourteen thousand dollars, and we're talking about a potential five million dollar savings if yeah. trench. I mean, that fourteen thousand is well worth it to at least eliminate the possibility of trenchless. Yeah, there, there, there I, has, I, I, there I, I, meeting with everybody here and everybody in engineering and, and, and that way, right? Because there's a discussion here and then it comes to this one, and there's a discussion in here, and there's no right, exactly, there's no continuity. And I've, I've been invited to occasional meetings, but I think it's been inconsistent. And I, I mean, I, I'll give advice recommendations and I'll do whatever I can, mm -hmm. but I mean, I'm not hiring a geotechnical. Engineer my or a geotech myself, and I'm not right. doing right. the borings myself. And we can't move forward on the alternatives analysis without the geotech. And that's the, that's the spot that we've been in for Get six correct. plus months, maybe yeah. longer. Yeah. Matt, can you give us some guidance tonight on what would be prudent to spend to go forward on that we might need in either case? I mean, we're 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 we're, we're we're incredibly gifted to have you on the commission. So give us some guidance on what we should approve because we're going to need it. And then what we shouldn't approve because we're not, we're not, we're, we're not dead set on in going in that direction. Sure. We got to sit down with Bill Hurley and whoever else and, and have a brainstorming party and, and decide a direction. Yep. Because we can appropriate we can appropriate money tonight for for this, and then it could go to the engineering department. And they could say, "No, we're going to go this way." Right. I, I I mean I wouldn't be willing to act on either B or D right now because right. I don't think either of them are the appropriate. I do. I mean, environmental is going to be necessary regardless. But if we can consolidate that with vetting the trenchless method, so at least going back to time bond and saying, "Hey." We've got your scope for doing the environmental testing. How much more would it be to do however? And I put specifics in my request six months ago or whatever. I, I don't know if it's two, three, four. Like, it's a certain depth. It's, there are deep borings that we need to do to verify the. We definitely need to know the for the foundation what that, that right. under what is happening under the pipe, we don't know. So right. definitely we have to do those testing. That is, it happens in any project that is that we have to do yeah. it. We can't just go and uh, lay down the pipe. Right. So that's part of the project. 
that happens. And, and these uh, methods like wetland crossing, similar methods were analyzed, uh, you know, trenchless or we do pipe boasting method or, or uh, we do, uh, you know, micro tunneling method. Uh, most of the time, they were also considered as part of permitting to keep in mind sometimes the Connecticut Deep, uh, Deep Environmental Agency, they, if you do trenchless methods, uh, they, where you're not impacting most of the uh, wetlands, uh, that's where the trenchless was kind of, uh, they, they approved that based on you're not impacting the right. wetlands much, so let's go with trenchless. Uh, methods, then we have to see the cost saving, cost effective way of which method. So, in this cardinal, uh, the, the trenchless method that they're proposing, it could be a cost uh, saving uh, way of doing that, meaning that the pipe, let's go with the parallel alignment of the pipe with the existing pipes. Let's go with, like, with the wetland crossing, we are doing with just not touching anything. Uh, that's why that trenchless method we did not pay attention to. Uh, so let's lay the pipe just based on the on the existing alignment, the way the existing alignment is. And how we decide that, that is based on the existing conditions. When the cardinal did the survey, they did the existing profiles uh, of the hole underneath the roadway, what is how deep it is going, uh, where the pipe, how shallow the pipe is. It's not that deep pipe, it's a shallow pipe. Uh, so, based on the existing profiles uh, that, that they have analyzed, that what method uh, should be suitable for it. Uh, I don't think that we will have to do all the detailed analysis to later figure out what kind of method we are going. The methods are chosen based on cost. Uh, trenchless method could be a very, very, I will have to see how cost, it, it's not cost effective. This is what the decision factors has been when we analyze these uh, the, these methods. So okay. we came up with keeping the existing alignment and, and go with it, and similarly we're doing with this. So okay. that's how we are deciding these methods and uh, what to put in and what not to put in. So, in, I mean, I haven't been involved from the start of these projects, but in the meetings that I've been to and asked these questions, yes. the answers have been we haven't considered that, we'll get back to you. And that yes. just hasn't made me very comfortable about, I mean, usually you do an alternative analysis before you go into detailed design. Yes. And it, it didn't seem like that happened, or at least it wasn't they a very did. thorough one. Uh, they did, because of wetland crossing, uh, one D and B was hired. They did a uh, alternative analysis based on the existing conditions, what the alignment of the project, if you do the the offset alignment, or we do the bypass, or or, or we uh, we do an, uh, any other method. So right. that is all based on the existing uh, existing plans and profiles uh, that they do, uh, doing a groundwater table analysis that they do existing uh, boring analysis, like you know how high the water table is near okay. the wetlands. Near, so those preliminary analysis have decided which method to go with. Okay, let, 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 let me jump in here and, and, and try and kind of break this into, into pieces. The, the, the wetland, we, we're, we're kind of jumping between projects. On, in, on B, we have the East Trunk Sewer Line, the environmental. Okay, is, 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 okay, the old, uh, for, for letter, letter, letter B is in boy. Right. Right. And Oh, on the cardinal report. No, no, no. On the no, no. On the, on the agenda. agenda. Oh, okay. That's not the agenda I'm looking at. That's the problem. <laughs> Which it's new agenda. Yeah, my agenda has. I sent one out this morning. Look on the yeah, the time bond environmental. Yeah, that's under B. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, so is that a worthwhile exp uh, endeavor? In, in you know, that could very well tell us that. We need to do trenchless given the environmental contamination that exists. But I, I hear you. I hear you, Mark, on that. But I think I was questioning is that we're going to have Ty and Bond do that, and they just do the three test deep test borings, which Matt's been asking for to see if then we could really wrap it up. Where I think I think it was recommended from Cardinal just do a couple deep test borings so we could see if trenchless is going to work if the soils. On the deep trench list are going to work. And I think it really is okay. just 
have someone out there to do it. We should just okay. have them do the three that you're recommending okay. for another oh. couple thousand dollars okay. instead of doing a re. Gotcha. re you know, gotcha. But we, we okay. But the issue is we don't have this in fr that in front of us. So this is going to be a thumbs down on B. It sounds like. Well, but it, if if you want to try to get it moving, can we take? If you look in the cardinal report there, I think they're recommending seventy five hundred dollars for tie and bond, and then another five uh, to ten. For the it was 14. Uh, yeah, it was like a total of fourteen. Can we can we give can we give up to an amount? Can we approve up to where we have to go to the tie and bond? I mean, here's, Chris, here's here's my issue. Cardinal came in and gave a presentation, and I personally didn't get the impression that they were um, um, dynamically thinking about options other than the one that they presented. So to engage them and start to go down a road with them might be disingenuous. But who's but Ty and Bond's gonna be doing the test borings. Well and I that, think you yeah. have you got have locations that you wanna wanna get. You kinda gave three different locations. Can we just give them those locations and say, can you just do some borings here? You, you gotta got give me a yeah. price, you gotta you gotta approve a price that's pretty close. I'm not going to go to the board and say, well, we think it's going to be this much. Yeah. Well, you think or you know. But I think we say it look for next time. Just because that makes my life easier. A bill is going to be in a few minutes. So that will be nice uh, if you have a yeah. good uh, questions of any, like, around this. this but he may help. Okay. So we'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to B. What, what do we Mr. think Chairman, about? Chairman, yes. can I make a motion to move item? At item E, ahead of items B and D on the agenda. Can I get a second? Uh, second, Matt, all in favor? Aye. Right, so, item in front okay. of now us, we have is item E as an excellent. To hear, consider, and act on funding a 250 kilowatt trailer mounted generator, totaling $125,000. <laughs> How much? Who wants, who, who wants that's, that's me. The, yeah. the generator at the brand new Ethan Turnpike pump station failed in May. It's under warranty. But in the fine print of the warranty, a rental unit is not included. That's in all new installations for generators. I jumped up and down with Cummins and Mike Ruddy, and he agreed to cover the rent, which is still on board. And we are approaching $30,000. With the, with the supply chain issues, with me looking into other generators to rent at 12 to $1,500 more than what we're being charged per week. Having a generator of this side, size on a trailer, I can stick it at any pump station at any time. I can also power part of the plant that's not hooked up to a generator that was done during the upgrade. Why they decided not to hook up one building to generator power is beyond me. But I've got some pricing. It's through SourceWell. It's government pricing. It's, it's cheaper than most, no tax, obviously. So that was the rationale behind that. Can I put a motion, or what is there a motion on the table? A motion. Uh, let's put a motion and then uh, to have a discussion. I put a motion uh, to act on funding for a 250 kilowatt trailer mounted generator totaling 125,000 up to 125. Second. Second. Uh, second from Tom. We're giving to that one to Tom tonight. Uh, comments, questions. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Do we have a, do we have a trail to mount it on? It comes it with comes the trailer. It comes with its own trail. Do we have a truck to pack to pull it? Absolutely. So I'll tow it. Self, all self. Oh, 
There's a commitment I'm to it. it. <laughs> we should have done this three months ago. <laughs> I would like to amend the emotion. I'd like to amend, amend the motion <laughs> to have uh, Chris's company tow. Wait, uh, <laughs> free of charge. Free of charge. <laughs> Guarantee. I'm scoring it though. <laughs> okay, so okay, we got one done. All right, let's try for another one. Wait, wait, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, I, I just, I just have a quick question. What, what, what's the useful life on these uh, pumps normally? And I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, what, what I'm trying to my own. Properly maintained, we're looking at 30 to 40 years. Okay, so uh, I, I, I'm just saying, so it, it, if there fill a gap, you know, it should should something come up, I mean, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Can, can I ask one additional question Absolutely. about the insurance? This thing is running on gasoline? Diesel. Diesel? Yes. It's insured, fully insured, as you're towing it around town or whatever? Yes. It'll be covered under the town? Yes. It'll have a license plate, it'll have an insurance card, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's covered. Okay. Thank you. Stored in a boat floodline? Yes. Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, move on. <laughs> These are all good questions. What's the total number of potential sites that, that this could? Uh, uh, it, it will cover from? all eight pump stations. It will cover part of the plant that's not under generator uh, power during an outage. And God forbid, in, in some other circumstance, it could power the town hall and Wherever. And then while we're asking questions, yes, Bill. Yes. as we're asking questions, can we take this generator next year and put it at one of the pump stations we're creating that to have a, and then replace it with a new generator? Absolutely. So that we keep the life of this one at moving? Absolutely. Okay. It, 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 it frees up money, which I didn't even think of. When we do a replacement, the company usually has to charge you for a rental. Well, right. We put ours there and then right. no charge. Okay. Yes, so. Good point. So 125k, and, and, and the monthly cost. I mean, we're saying third, uh, what, what what is the monthly cost to rent? I knew you were going to ask me that. I don't. Have you were charging, charging like 3,500. There's there, it's ballpark. 2,800 a week. Okay. Give kudos to Cummins and, and Mike Reddy for for stepping up and covering this one because this, this is getting expensive. Let's uh, let's let's transition back to B. Well, I, I I think I I see Bill Hurley's back. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just saying it, it would. <laughs> Could you bring uh, Bill up to speed on where we are and where we want to go? So, looking at it was, I mean, I guess we've got the time bombs. We were on the oh, time bomb sure. item within the agenda, but I was looking at Cardinal's backup information, which has a letter that says, per the July 21st meeting, we've opted not to consider any design alternatives, including trenchless. That's the first I'm hearing of us not considering trenchless. I thought we were very much considering trenchless, and so um, I'm wondering where that came from, why that's the case. I think it's been at least six months since I had recommended we do deep borings to validate whether or not trenchless is a viable option. To my knowledge, those never happened, so I don't think we should be eliminating trenchless without those deep borings taking place. Uh, my recollection uh, was there were a couple of things. One, Don Marshall and the of Public Works had recommended against it, uh, and so did uh, a Cardinal, and then there's another engineer that we had talked to that also. A lot, and if it was a straight line, then that would be uh, a more viable, but especially in the area where we do the, what I call the zigzag, the, the short space is just not it wasn't it didn't uh, approve uh, deem, uh, deem, uh, um, deem, uh, a prudent alternative to so that. well there's I mean so I've designed a bunch of these mm -hmm. and been installing them and they've been huge cost savings everywhere I've done them and you can also you can do a hybrid approach you can trench where there's short segments and you can do one piecemeal 
directional. I mean, considering that the prices we've been getting, I don't know that I necessarily buy that it's more expensive to do trenchless. Even in designs where I've designed all trench, after a contractor's won the job, they've said, can I do trenchless instead and I'll give you a credit for 20000 or 50000 or whatever it is on smaller jobs, mm -hmm. to which I've said, as long as I don't have to repermit it, of course. The, the other was the mix of if it was the same material. And again, these are ones uh, uh, that um, uh, I've only had limited uh, sure. trenchless experience, I, I admit that as well. Uh, where um, if it was like all rock or, or all water, but the fact that we have half and half, again, the only, in my opinion, the only way it would have worked would have been, uh, like you said, a hybrid. And uh, maybe for the, quote, Kenwood section, um, we could uh, still look into that as an alternative. If, if in the bid, I would still propose it the way it is because I think just by looking into this and, and doing more and then hiring somebody, because again, it, was, it wasn't it was cheap to, to you know, re quote, redesign for that, uh, that it would, it would delay it even more. Uh, the one thing I wanted to update, which I don't know if it was brought up or not, is just two weeks ago, the town applied for a communities, Connecticut communities grant. That doesn't mean we're gonna get it, but uh, a couple things. One is, uh, I believe is in the past, and, and don't quote me on the exact number, it was like one or two million capped. Now it's up to 10 million. And it, I believe it's a 50% share. So even if we went with the whole ball of wax, say 10 million, even looking at laterals and paving and making sure we had everything all our ducks in order, uh, obviously a $5 million grant would be huge. Uh, right now that's in the hopper. I've been told that they're supposed to make a decision a month or so after the application. Now, they've said that in the past and maybe it's six weeks, maybe it's two months, but it, it looks like it's supposed to be a relatively short turnaround. Uh, and obviously once we know that, we, we will let the uh, commission know and, and everybody know. Uh, but that, that would be huge because obviously then that's a tremendous savings. And then the only thing is with grants, one of two things would happen. Either they give it, gave quote, gave us the grant because we're shovel ready, right. or what, what, what's the new term I keep on forgetting? Quick, quick, quick start or quick build. Quick build. That's the new, I don't know, somebody got paid for that, you know. <laughs> uh, so quick build, and, uh, and therefore they may want us to start as soon as possible. And then I could also tell you that for a sidewalk job, uh, the state uh, one time announced we got the money and it took almost a year just for us to get the paperwork to sign. So I don't know the aspect on that, but from everything I've heard, they want to move these quickly. So um, if, if uh, they say what they mean, uh, or mean what they say, sorry, then uh, this should be uh, you know, full, full steam ahead. And uh, we can make it in there. Uh, again, we'd have to uh, finalize and make sure it's, you know, because you want to compare apples to apples or whatever, but maybe to have a proponent, what we call an ad alternate or an alternate, where if, um, if the contractor has uh, methods for potential savings, uh, they can list them here or whatever. And then, you know, that might change the bid. And if, if it were to be significant, by all means, I'm not opposed to it. It's just that we, we took more than just one engineer, and then that, that's where um, uh, we, we had come up with that decision. And then it was rather than stall, as you know, it's been stalled for quite a time. Some of it due to COVID, and then a lot of it, unfortunately, due to funding. You know, if, if it was a $2.2 million, this thing would have been done way back when, or 2.5, whatever it started out as. Yeah, those, uh, those, but the, come on, the, those, those quotes were never accurate. And the, the thing that concerns me the most is that we haven't done any environmental soil testing. And as we found out from the, the Eastern uh, Turnpike pump station, moving contaminated soils, extremely expensive. So why don't, what can, can. Mark on that, we, we did have time bonds uh, do uh, soil composition. And uh, they there were two two uh, test pits. At, uh, I'm gonna again. I'm going by memory here. Out of say 20, there were two of air. I'll call areas of concern. Uh, they weren't the hazardous waste, but there might be some contamination. 
and tie in, and that's what that tie in bond yeah. that approval was that they would write the specs or the the section of the specs to incorporate the environmental and how to handle it and then it would be put in with the other specs from Cardinal and then we, we would put the, the uh, project out to bid. Yeah, so so, we have, so uh, it seems uh, like that's a good idea to to do the environmental. The question that where we we landed after a, another 20 minutes of conversation around this was would it not make sense to do the deep boring testing at the same time with tie and bond? Uh, I would leave that up to the uh, commission. Uh, Wright Pierce had recommended uh, uh, perhaps uh, going with, with deeper borings, uh, but I think that was, again, more of the trench list, not, not necessarily the uh, composition. Uh, and that's why we had time bond. I think we had it once to do, or somebody do borings, and then we had to hire another company to, to do the environmental one. So. Um, you can always do more, and, and there might be savings in that, or it could be waste of time and money. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I honestly, I think, I think we have to based on what Ty and Bond had said. Uh, you might, if I recall, that was the one where uh, we had, I think, thirty-four thousand left in the uh, in an account, and it was uh, that included traffic and some other things, and then we had a transfer or. The DPW I think that was a wetland. I think that was a wetland crossing. Um, it, it, it could be. I could be confusing. I didn't think it was, but I anyway. There was. We were able I, to use that. And the, like, no, I, I think the dis. I think the the disconnect here is um, that internally there's been a decision made to go with Cardinal and to go with their approach, and the feeling I'm getting from the commission is that. Uh, that's not where we are necessarily, and that we believe that tranquilis is an option that that needs to be explored. So, given the given the disconnect, we're trying to we we're trying to figure out what we can uh, approve um, that that could be used in 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 kind of either tangent, um, and then have uh, figure out a process for. We're getting everyone uh, on board on the direction this needs to go. So, it seems to me that item B on the tie and bond seventy five hundred dollars that seems to be a, a, a good decision. Um, so where yeah, I was, yeah, I agree definitely. You want to have that in the contract to cover yourself. Uh, and so they'll have means, you know, they'll have, they'll suggest means and methods. They'll have the specifications in there. So, yes, I, I totally agree that the 7,500. That's, that's if, we're, if we rip up the road, we, we need to know what it's going to cost to remediate that, that soil. Correct. We're, I mean, regardless, the environmental is necessary. The, the hang up that I think we have right now is that we would like tie and bond if they're capable to do the deep bore testing in conjunction with their environmental. And we don't have scope and fee in front of us from them for that. Now, I want to be clear, is this core? Deep boring. Deep, Deep boring, boring yeah, or okay. but, your technical investigation is referring. And it, and it is related to vetting the trenchless option, so, which if we don't have those, then no contractor will be able to accurately say whether or not they can even provide that as an ad alternate should we go that route as opposed to actually designing for trenchless. So just to, just to chime in, I yeah. just happened to have a report in front of me. DNB was hired to analyze the trenchless uh, for trenchless because that was going around. So technically, according to the report, uh, the, it depends on the alignment of the pipe because we are keeping the same alignment. We are not touching the alignment of the pipe, and that's what our intention is. We want to keep it same alignment. And based on that, they said the trenchless technologies, because if you're keeping in the same alignment, then it's not suitable. But if you are going off the alignment, the trenchless uh, technologies, they involve micro tunneling and Bursting. Those are the two categories which comes into trench list, which we're not doing. Excuse me. Excuse me. Why? Why? Why are we talking about the the wetland crossing now? 
because uh, they also analyze the trenchless methods for for the for the east strong wetland crossing for the east strong Klein wetland crossing and same similar uh, topic we are discussing with cardinal uh, trenchless technologies bring in that concept of trenchless technology to keep in mind that there's the borings are not necessarily, you know, you're you're not relating to the method. I don't know that I agree with what you okay. just said, though, about, I mean, pipe bursting yes. is for the same alignment. You have to actually go through the existing pipe. That's what pipe bursting is. It's also so part of the trenchless method. I just, yeah. I don't know that I necessarily okay. have faith with in d and okay. and Cardinal's ability to analyze trenchless. Okay. I don't know what their experience and record is, but... Okay. Everything that I've been involved in so far does not make me comfortable with their ability to actually. I, I agree with that 100 percent. One thing I, I will ask if you've done this before, uh, one of the things John and I were talking about, and, and again, uh, it, it definitely opens up for discussion, is the idea, money being tight, and it's only gotten worse, uh, the laterals for the homes on the south side of the road of uh, uh, Kenwood in particular, uh, they they tie into the uh, existing line that's along the river. So that's why the pipe bursting wouldn't work for that one. Yeah. But uh, for that, uh, the trenchless, are they able to do the laterals? Because again, the trenchless that I'm used to is usually, you know, longer yeah. sections where there's no tie-ins. It's like manhole to manhole and nobody ties in. Right. If there's been tie-ins with the, the uh, main on that, or what I'm getting at, and again, there might be some savings, but you're going to lose some with the, tr uh, with the long save from me to you, but then we have to do another sister right. line. Uh, if it's 10 feet instead of 25, there will be savings there. And sorry, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> have to do like two lines, you know, two lines or whatever. And so, uh, but again, I'm not saying that's where we, we did, you know, as the commission and when we agreed to have at least a third party look at it, we've had other engineers look at it. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. And uh, the ones that say, you know, go for it, maybe there will be a savings and maybe there won't be. If the commission wants to uh, proceed with that, then I would say you should make the approval to, to go and have somebody investigate it and, and, and do it. Because again, we were talking a little bit about this before. And when we thought we had uh, uh, cursory advice, I'll be honest with you on that, but from two other engineering firms, we thought that that was enough to, to make it go forward and in the interest of time. Uh, so the other thing that we're talking about is again, whether we get the grant, whether we uh, want to move forward with this, it might be possible if, if you were to get a scope quickly from uh, somebody and they were able to do the borings quickly and do everything, say, I'm just going to arbitrarily say in a three-month, four-month period, right. while we're putting the, the project out to bid, you could have that, like you were saying before, add alternate or alternate section and then kind of just slide that in and at least the contractors and with the information, right? Exactly. But again, it's going to cost more money to investigate and do whatever. But if well, that's what the commission right wants, now, I mean, I think we have a quote mm -hmm. from Cardinal for fourteen thousand to do the deep. The, uh, right. That there seems is. like money well worth spending on a upwards of ten million dollar job to verify whether or not an alternative construction method is viable. And it could turn out that the boring say trenchless is not an option. But I don't want to say trenchless is not an option without actually without saying that okay. it's actually not an option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, again, uh, um, I'll, I'll double check with the, uh, the composition ones. But again, same thing. I think both of them were like maybe a foot or two below the, the pipeline. Uh, being 25 feet, they, they're pretty deep. Right. Right. I'm, so, I'm aware. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, um, but if that's something, and, and that, that's, that's why we brought it up in, in the sheet. Because, right. Again, full disclosure. If, uh, sometimes it costs more money to try to save money, and right. much with the third party, at least having another set of eyes, if that's something. But I would recommend that we keep forward, and then if this comes in, and then, you know, again, because if, if we get that grant, I, I don't, I think it's still going to take about four months right. to put the thing out the bid, and then John could attest, and uh, 
uh, our purchasing agents, uh, the purchasing department there, is, and unfortunately, they're just overwhelmed, and uh, it's a slow go. So we're probably, even if we had everything ready tomorrow, it would, and then um, the uh, Cardinal with their upgrade, which is on the, the uh, sheet as well, again, just confirming with utilities, uh, they are extremely difficult now, utilities. Uh, unfortunately, they've, they've held up the Duck Farm Bridge six months, uh, which usually I would say six weeks is typical. Um, my contacts have been with the town 32 years, and the changeover, and as you know, the aquarium's been bought out. It, it's, I'm now down to basically one, two contacts a company, which is really a shame, you know. And uh, uh, so trying to get a hold of them, and if they're not, you know, they're not available, you have to wait a week or two, and it takes a long time. So that's going to be in there. So that's why, as I said, I think there's enough, to, but you'd have to, like, basically, I think, bolt on it today kind of thing, and, and then try to have a... Uh, a scope or at least get the borings done and then you know based on that then if you have somebody in the wings to um, try to do at least some trenchless specs uh, I, I have no opposition to that it's just that I wouldn't want if, if they take six months to do you know or eight months to do then that might hold you know so again a lot of things are in play and you guys meet every month anyway so uh, you know I, I don't think it be any harm to at least start the first step right um, that that's that's my advice you know so. what is um what's time bond i mean obviously we're getting close to frost time when geotech is less popular um, um did, did, are they planning on doing their environmental borings within the next month uh, no no the time bond have done the boring the borings have been done already for composition they're not. This I think was. We're a little confused. They're not. Tyne Bond's not doing any environmental borings. This is just to do their report oh, on what to handle it. There's the no more boring going on. I think we're both. I think. Okay. Yeah, both, yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Okay. The, the, um, There's no borings going on right now from Tyne Bond. They're just going to prepare a report for $7,500 on how to handle right. on how to handle the environmental. No, the the uh, borings were about. We were figuring about fourteen thousand dollars. I mean, they say five to ten, but Correct. I I think it's going to be more. And I think if somebody has to analyze that, I thought, seven, we, seven, I thought eight, we've been approving seventy five hundred for, for boring. Yes, and then no, no, the no. seventy five seventy five hundred uh, and disposal of wastewater and correct. Just the preparing how to handle. Right. The environmental remediation based on the borings that their yeah, company has ready. done, their subcontractor will call it. Okay. Uh, they um, they're writing the specifications. Coordination and management was 500 soil and groundwater management report, which would be part of this package, would be 2,000 2,500 for drawings. I have to question that a little bit, but and then the technical specifications are 2,500. Uh, the drawings may involve some sort of detail or um, obviously the locations uh, where the, uh, uh, I want to, don't quote me on it, we'll just say 17 plus 50 or something like that. Was, I, I know one of the uh, deep tests and then there was another one. And if I recall, these are like uh, the um, like pyrobenzene, or, as I said, the contaminant. No PCBs were discovered, but uh, unfortunately it's stuff that will exceed the residential and since they don't have an industrial one that kind of we got to haul it out to Massachusetts or, or whatever unless they have specific specifications where if they retest and, and it's not as bad or if it's just one bad spot then they can maybe put it back in the hole and there'll be some savings there but that's that's what the 7500 is it was in the back of it I mean there's a lot of in the back of it right. I don't think you had time to read it so but it's there. So I think on that, I would put a motion out. Um, well, well, we already have a motion out. You already do have a motion out? <laughs> Don't put another motion out. Okay. What's the, mo what's the you motion? You made the motion, and the motion, I believe, was to approve oh. up to 7,500 for design services for tie and bond. And to make it clear, I was saying funding, environmental specs, 
try to, you know, try to. Is there a second? So, we, we already have a second on the motion. We were discussing it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't recall the second. Okay. That was me. I think it was Tom. But oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was about an hour ago. Okay. Let's have it. Let's bring it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? So, in favor was Matt, Tom, Ron, myself. Okay, unanimous. Okay, so that's B. Okay. Let's let's go to let's go let's go to let's go to C. On a second stage. Item C is to hear, consider, and act on a request for funding a change order from DMB for the Metro Wetlands Crossing tolling. Thirty-five thousand dollars. Bill, what do what do we have here? Okay, on um, on that on the last invoice, it, it was uh, brought to our attention that uh, the uh, project fee had gone up. So that kind of had us in a a little bit of a, 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 t a tizzy. And then I do remember back around December, again trying to get the borings before the the weather got uh, too bad. That. Um, if I recall, the board uh, uh, approved uh, the uh, change order of, uh, I 31, think it was like 20, 31,400 dollars. And so if that change order has been approved and just hasn't been processed, that's kind of on us. If it hasn't been formally approved here. It was approved here. It was approved. It never went anywhere else. Never wear anywhere. Oh, okay. okay. So that's where we're at then. Yeah. Well, you're at 31,000 or 35,000? So, because Mark gave the presentation. 31,000. Right. Oh. discussion, it was voted on. Right. But 31,000. I was never lobbed into my court to say, okay, now do okay. points and go here, there, and everywhere. And as we were talking about, there was confusion of where if the money comes out of the WPCA budget, then there's no further approval. If it's bonded, we knew it had to go to the board. But the fund balance it was where we were getting conflicting, and I believe now it's been clear, unfortunately, yeah. that they want uh, board approval. Yeah, board's approval. So if that's the case, then we have to get on the uh, agenda for, for that for that change order. Can we go back to last December? When the money they approved last December, meaning. The commission, yeah, can that go, or does it have to get? Oh no, I, I I think if this commission already approved it, that's the good news is we thought it was going to be a thirty-five thousand dollars change where you have to pay it, but you guys already approved it, then it just has to go to the, the boards. But we approved and, thirty-one and we'll, four. I'll, I'll just have to just have to say we approved thirty-one four. Thirty-one thousand. Thirty-one thousand four hundred dollars as and, per. And as what's he looking for now? How much? Thirty-five. Well, that was that was the, <laughs> uh, that was the thirty-five. That was under uh, what we thought from a phone call uh, with uh, the administrator there. Uh, that's how much it was. Again, this was only yesterday that it came up, and so I, I wanted to put it on the agenda because this change order could affect. You know, by, by the uh, the, um, the uh, consultant putting the thing out to bid for the East uh, Trunk Wetlands Cross. As it turns out, if you guys already approved, if you've already approved this, then we can we can cancel that. Well, we haven't approved. Agenda. We haven't approved thirty-five thousand. We approved thirty-one four. Yeah. So I'm not sure it's thirty-one four. Is it in the meeting minutes? Because I, yeah, that, yeah, I, but, but you have separate meeting minutes. I went to yeah, the I went to the meeting yeah. minute manager thing, and I think it's thirty one even. And I printed that out. And I didn't so, so what? What do we need for the? It was December fifteenth, twenty twenty one. Mark presented the uh, information. I think Joe made the motion. And if, if I recall, it was one of those things where D and B it was a little bit of a stall. 
and then we finally got the boring contractor available like the first week in January and um, you know uh, and then if we didn't use them that particular week or two with the weather we could have been looking at springtime yeah. earlier so it would have been a three or four month delay uh, if uh, again, and as far as I know, DB has not come out with any new change orders. Only, uh, this only one that one. Virus has then this is one of those where it. You guys have already approved it, and I would say we can withdraw this but, from from the agenda. Or but we haven't approved the 35. We approved 31. So do yeah, we have to we, make another? We're caught in a loop. Let's 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 um, Bill. It sounds like 31 or 31,000 works for now. That, that's that's correct. Okay. That's okay. correct. The, 30, the 35 was again just trying to get something out. Okay. And by the way, I want to at least acknowledge you <laughs> at the last minute getting everything that I gave her to to put out on the agenda. And so no we, action we, to be taken on set. And let's just say it was 31 thousand even, and it ends up being 31 four. Then it's an it's so just in in case I put 35 thousand okay. trying to. Make sure we had it covered until we got the exact numbers. That's twenty eight thousand. Bill, let me ask you a question. Are you going to need more money? Because I, I, I don't want to have another special um, commission meeting <laughs> or four hundred bucks or four thousand. <laughs> well, if, if it's four hundred bucks, I'll take it out of the operating budget. Yeah, I mean, that, okay, that's, uh, very well. So no now, action, no action taken on C. Uh, we'll, right. Uh, we'll I think we. Could, We'll continue on to, to D. D is to here consider and act on a request for funding for Cardinal Engineering for plan updating, et cetera, totaling $30,000, uh, estimated $50,000 more if laterals need to be included in the revised design. I'm certain that laterals will need to be included in the revised design, but I'm not... Um, doesn't it doesn't feel to me anyways that we're um we're ready to proceed with cardinal on this are we or is this to to prep it for an rf some sort of rfp so i mean bill you had provided us with this whole the only wrinkle i was very much willing to just say absolutely not to this mm -hmm. i don't want to jeopardize a potential grant Mm -hmm. That would be my only hesitation to saying absolutely not to D. So, I guess walk us through that whole piece of the pie. I mean, what's the current status of that grant stuff? What's the current status of the design? The cur current status of the grant is that the grant application has been submitted. Okay. Uh, to the state. D -E -C -D. D -E -C -D. And, uh, Notice of the award is, is upcoming. We okay. anticipated four to six weeks. Okay. And assuming that we were awarded, what needs to happen? What's the time frame on the grant? Do we, we don't know no, any of that. None of that. They, they, they okay. did not uh, disclose that. Okay. So we don't, we don't know. Okay. Uh, what uh, the motion here, again, trying to get the uh, uh, project, which has been stuck in the mud, we all know that. Right. Get it moving forward uh, is uh, what was we had asked uh, Cardinal to do a massive, and this was back in the summer uh, of uh, re redesign, or not a redesign, but update the drawings, uh, construction administration, everything. And they came out with like a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar quote, which is in your your packet there. Then there was another one where again the director of public works. Uh, and he's following the state guidelines where when you have a designer, you have a different inspector. Uh, that's what the state does. Um, most of the municipalities, they don't mind hiring the same one, but not all. And the, the larger the project, obviously, uh, it makes sense to, to do that. So with that in mind, we basically had to throw out Cardinal's 750 uh, quote uh, where we were going to hire him for that. And we said, well, what it would take to at least update uh, the plans, have some utility coordination, uh, update any specs, uh, revise some of the quantities, because you might recall in the 
we were thinking of realigning the sewer line for, I'm going to say, number two or 59 Post Road, which was on the south side of uh, Route 130 or Post Road. That, uh, that development that was sold, they, they kept the building where it was, so we don't have to reline that section. And so, therefore, um, uh, that we would take that out of, out of the bid, uh, so the quantities have to change. He, he, uh, he put in the quote of a cost estimate, and between you and me, it, you, the quantities are more important. The cost estimate doesn't matter because nobody knows until you put the thing out the bid the way things are going. Um, so to me, it, it, it did fair, but there's not going to be that much of a cost savings for that. Then uh, contamination soil and groundwater coordination with tie and bond, they put down 3,500 uh, where they would get their specs and kind of merge them in. Um, you could question that cost on whether it's really necessary. If they have it as a completely section, you know, we, we could uh, say maybe $1,000 or we don't have to agree to it at all. And then was design revisions, and that was if required. And much to Mark's point or, or, or somebody else's point where, you know, you don't want to have to go back for a small amount. I was figuring, let's put 5000 in there if there was because of some utility, uh, something. Uh, uh, geez, I'm going to pull that away. <laughs> geez, turn on. Um, that uh, 5000 would be the de design revision. Just to give us a little bit, of, if it was something super major, then obviously it's going to be more than that. But if it was minor changes where it involved a couple of hours, uh, then then why have to go back? So that that's why that was in there. And so that came out to twenty nine five, and then I just I just figured to round it up to thirty thousand so that we would be covered. And so um, you know that that's where I stand for for this. It would be to update. So that we could put the thing out to bid. Uh, the only caveat would be, and maybe that's where the five thousand or whatever would come in if, if it was even needed, or we could do it as a completely almost separate document with the directional dr drilling or the uh, you know where we would um, uh, or transfer technology where we would put that in as I won't call it as an appendix, but as an add on. Right, and, and then that way, information. I don't know. They don't even have to touch it if you know what I mean. Exactly. And and so. Uh, uh, we would put that in there. Uh, so that, that's what the proposal is. It would be designed a, a, as is. They would update, talk to the utilities, get the project moving. Uh, at one point, uh, uh, I'm going to say a couple of months ago, John had thought, well, for you know, 25 or 30,000 to get this thing moving, he seemed to be okay with it. I don't know if your mind has changed since no. then. And, uh, and so that's where, again, just in an effort to get this thing moving. If um, you want to go with another option and you're able to get it in, then that's fine. Uh, the, I'll call it the two-month delay where we did the switch over. We felt we had done enough, but uh, if, if the commission wants to do more, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, that's up to you guys. Um, and we, you know, we, we did our due diligence where it didn't cost us anything, but if you want to spend more to make sure, that's fine. I would just say that whoever does the investigation or the boring, they would have to, I won't say super fast track, but it, you don't want to wait in six months or a year. I, I think right. that would yeah. put everything in jeopardy. But if they can do something rather quick, uh, um, then, or even if they did one, like we were talking about before, the one area, say Kenwood, because again, the zigzag, and I don't know if you have enough room for Ash Street as an example or that other Dale would, I think, you know. But uh, for Kenwood, to, to pop maybe six borings or ten borings, if that's enough, then maybe that lowers it down a little bit. And if they can get out there and maybe only do it in two days, three days, then, um, you know, maybe maybe it's worth it. That's up to the commission. So that's where I stand. I would recommend the, the 30,000 for Cardinal. And if you then want to, you know, make your own emotions to, to do the translish, then the only thing, though, would be is for any of these, though, it may have to go to the board. It's, yeah. It's it's so, the, so we'd have to we'd have to be prepared, prepared to answer uh, questions. And and again, one of it might be simply saying, if it's say ten thousand for design or whatever, analyzing the borings, and another ten thousand or whatever, or a total of fifteen thousand for the borings, 
15 to 20,000, whatever it might be, uh, for uh, analyzing the tarantulas technology in the hopes of maybe saving money. That I would think the boards wouldn't object to that, especially being the costs are going up. But we would have to we would have to address that before the board. So and I, and I keep on using the the term here because again. I remember the time on composition borings, which were deep. They were like, they were like twenty-seven thousand. They were something like that. Cardinal here says five to ten thousand, right? And so it really matters on what you're looking at. If it's going to be to find the depth of water and rock even further down, it's kind of a shame that when we did the original one, we didn't go down to say thirty-five feet or whatever it might be. Uh, but uh, if that's all it is, then maybe it's it's on the low range. If you're looking at composition as well, then that's a, a different story. But I I don't know if the trench list has that much. Well, I guess there's a little bit of spoilers to it, right? I mean, open excavation. Yes, but uh, yes, I think it's the launch and receiving pit. That's, yeah, that's about it. On, the, on either end, right? Anyway, that, that's where the I... The only uh, issue I have with this is the laterals are not included in any scope of this construction. And you're putting a pipe in, and you've made no provision whatsoever to rehook the people up. Now, just devil's advocate, all right, we approved 30000 for to upgrade Cardinal things, but it's not complete. Are they going to say, well, why is it not complete? That's my only... Well, well, the homeowners, yeah, and again, it was a decision made way before we got involved or whatever, but um, that that uh, po uh, pose would be is that you would have to have uh, Cardinal uh, do some surveying, confirm that uh, the laterals could be hooked up if they included that in the design and then in the bid package, uh, because as we were going back and forth, when somebody wants to upgrade from septic to uh, to tie the sand, it's all on them. This one here, they didn't ask really for it. We've kind of put it on them. So if the board wanted to do a 50-50 or they felt like, you know what, we're the ones asking these homeowners to tie in, rather than delay it, because somebody with limited funds might wait 10 years to tie into the new line we just provided. Then, then that would be something we would have to, to put in. Are we talking existing laterals? Yeah. Do they do they already have? Yeah. Well, they already you, have would go, right? you would yeah. go from the laterals. These are mainly the south of Kenwood, where their laterals right now go to the root the, the Ash Creek, the line. Oh, okay. When oh. we put the new oh, line in in the roadway, the they line. now would have to oh, maybe have a pump, yeah. or if it's 25 feet deep, perhaps they still could have gravity flow. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where the you know the cost of the laterals we, we don't know until that gets confirmed. Okay. But I think you'd almost have to go in. You have to find where they're like how you don't you don't have that information. Yeah. You where they're like the sewer lateral leaves the house. Tapping fleet. We should call it a day. Yeah, you could yeah, get it through an asphalt down yeah. or something. But they're already they're already they're all hooked up through another line along the backside. Right. But if we're putting a new line in the middle, are we keeping that other line going? Well, the original plan was basically the bulkhead, so that flows from the uh, metro center and, and the main trunk line would still follow, but we would have to keep their line open until they made the hookup. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and this all ties in also with the, what? forgive me, Long Island Sound Fund or Fund for the Environment, where they're constantly looking at us to eliminate SSOs and all that kind of stuff. So the environmental cell is another component of this. Just don't eliminate the pipe. Well, we wouldn't eliminate the pipe unless the laterals were included mm -hmm. in design, then in part of the project, then once they were hooked up, then we would abandon everything. <laughs> well, what's included in the project? Because if we're trying to get it going, are we adding, are you just adding another thing into it? Because yes. right, the lateral what? yes. But but are we eliminating the pipe behind them that they're already tied into or keeping it? Keeping it. What's the project? Keeping it. Keeping it unless we incorporate the laterals into the main line. What we're doing is we're, 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 we would, uh, you typically bulkhead it, 
uh, so that the main flow would now go on, it would go on the new line. Mm -hmm. And only the, we'll call it the local flow, where the people that, yeah, that would, go would still go, that so would you, still go. Yeah, so that's what you're proposing is just to keep that full, the bulkhead and only the laterals from the homeowners are going into the that's old line. That's the current proposal. Okay, the current that's plan correct. Right now. So then, so then With why? I hope that the homeowners would then pay but why, hook up. I agree, but if, if it's not designed, why would they hook up? So if you're going to want them to hook up, I think we're going to have to almost hook it up for them. And I think we all and if, in this room agree. And if not, and if not, decision. if I was a homeowner, I'd say I'm not going to spend another $60,000 to hook zero. up into yeah. a sewer when I'm already hooked up into a sewer. And yeah. if it goes, if it goes into the, if it goes in the water, it goes in the water. I'm not spending any more money yeah. doing don't it. Don't abandon the pipe. <laughs> so, so I don't, I don't think if we're trying to move things along, I don't think we should propose that or remove the line, just leave it as it is and as designed. As designed. Yeah. And don't spend that extra fifty thousand for laterals because if we're not going to do it. Why do we need the investigation for it? But isn't the whole idea here to get that sewage out of Ash Creek? Exactly. That's, what <laughs> so I, that's why I brought up that. I, I hear you, Mark. But then why isn't it included to remove the line and hook up all I, the houses to the line? Because because Chris, the, the the whole the whole spec package was deficient in my mind. I mean, we didn't have any environmental testing in in the original. Well, well, it was environmental testing, and I honestly think it was funding. I, I at that time they had gotten a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar grant. They thought that was wonderful, and the cost originally, but uh, not that it was two point five million. And then once it started going up, they had no intentions, or they thought it was going to be on the home. But I, I don't want to be sitting here two years down the line and, and getting all change orders because we're saying, oh, yeah, we're going to hook up the homeowners now, and now we got to investigate it. We got, you know, it's not a part of the bid package. We're going to get, we're going to get killed on this. We're, 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 not, we're not going to spend this, do this project and spend this amount of money and not hook up the homeowners. But then, and I don't think, I don't think that was what the, is in the original build bid package that we're putting together now. Yeah. I, I don't well, know how to be more no, clear that, about this. That, that. And then Cardinal's thirty thousand dollar design would have to go up because we'd have to have them. We'd have to have them. But what else plans for lateral? So if we're, I hear you, Mark, on that. But what else do we have to do for the design, not just the laterals? Now we're going to have to cap and remove the pipe. And the environment. I don't, I don't know if you have to. I you have we, to cap the pipe, but I don't know if you have to remove the pipe. Okay. You have to cap it. No sewer but flow I, in the pipe. Yeah. So it's just uh, an abandoned in place pipe. That's not an issue. Okay. But do we have all this in the bid package as the specs of what we're doing? No. Absolutely not. So is that the 50, does the $50,000 extra include it or just include the laterals? That was just my quick estimate. Oh, I, just, yeah. I, I honestly don't know how much. I know. Because we haven't approached Cardinal or, or anybody I'm, about it. I, we, I just was trying to give you a feel of how, you know, to include the laterals, you're going to have to then increase the design, and then you're obviously going to increase the project cost. But if that's what we're all looking to do, and that's the whole reason for it, should we just include that what you put, what you're proposing as the fifty thousand dollar extra in it, so we could kind of move this along? It sounds like the, the we everyone wants to move this along. I mean, the the other thing would be is if we the board at least votes that we're going to include the laterals, then we can talk the consultant and find out how much it would be and then you'd vote on the exact amount rather than a, on a, an engineer's estimate that you know, well, I, I think I think you have to look at it uh, two different ways I, I was on the WPC way back when when they were talking about this uh, you know, and um, the ideas that we we're having was that we would cap off the pipe and hook up to the lateral in front of the right down the road uh, and uh, the the other thing that came up was uh, as far as excavation for the, uh, the the new lateral connected to the house because if if the, you got um, if you have your output from the house in the back of the house today to go to the old pipe okay and you have to put it into the road there may be where you've got gravity where you have to you have to insert a pump into the thing uh, to get it up into the road. So I, I think that um, 
we're not close to saying the way we want to do this. I think we have to have uh, have another look yeah. at it. Yeah, this is like major. What's and so getting the the pipe is currently in Ash Creek and well, it's right adjacent to Ash Creek, and so it's it's theoretically leaking in, or like that's what we're concerned with. Yeah. And for you could have just lined that pipe. <laughs> they did have that choice, but because of the restriction, um, we can't do, we can't do that because there's, of there's the, the restriction. There's a, there's a manhole totally encompassed by a tree. And if the tree fell over, it would rip that right, right onto the ground. And so again, this is the trunk line. The trunk line. Two thirds of the. Two thirds of the meeting. I remember talking to a lady back in 2014. She had leans against her house and everything. The town said, well, leave all the leans to let us cut the tree down. She wouldn't let us. But so when we finish this job, though, and do the bulkhead, I mean, how much flow are we talking in this existing pipe? I'm just wondering if this is even worth doing. I mean, obviously, right now, being a trunk line, like, that's a <coughs> significant amount of flow. But are we talking, like, 15 houses, 20 houses, something like yeah, that? I think it's seven. Seven? It, I, I thought it was around a, a dozen. If I recall, there no other years flow so. because we're blocking all that and rerouting. And, and I think most of them are on the channel. Yeah, seem like it's money worth the investment. It's Not really more the con it's really more the size constriction, correct? The yeah. Size and environment, you know, the SSO, the, you know, or the, the, the restriction. What do you mean, size constriction? That that there's a 33 inches pipe we are replacing. The downstream, the receiving end of the pipe, isn't that restricted? If I'm right. Uh, that's the wetland. Yeah, no, no, no. But, but we're just another one. I'll be making it go through the post road, where that there's a 33 the inches restriction. Is that the existing line is 33? Uh, this is according to the map yeah, that the uh, railroad was right. used for metro car. Uh, that's how I know. It's a restriction. The receiving end of the pipe is 33 inches restriction. They propose to line the pipe, but because of that inflow restriction that is coming but from all the. Yeah. That's I, 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 think think what, I think the best thing we can do yeah. for, for the commission is uh, we'll work together. We'll try to get as built on, on the lateral or if we have the elevation where it leaves the house. To find out, because uh, Ron made a good point, and we were discussing John and I and Mega as well. So John, um, because if you have to involve pumps and all that, that's only going to bring it up even right, more. Yeah. Well, plus, these are the gravity flow. There's a good inside people's basement. Yeah. Yeah. It might not be right. feasible, especially yeah. if somebody's got a finished basement. There's sewers on this side, and then you got to move it to that side. And as far as the fun for the environment or the leaking thing, if we're talking seven homes, it's, it's, it's at nothing. least low, low flow compared to everything right. else. There's nothing there. In terms of hookuping, hooking yeah, you just gotta hope the, there's enough. In terms of hooking, oh, that is, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's not enough. There's not enough flow. There's not enough flow in the pipe. So on occasion, you you might have know, to back up. Have to, How do you flush a trunk line? No, no, well, oh, yeah. you know, big pump. Well, again, it would be <laughs> low flow, but it would. Yeah, but there's that. But it's yeah. never backing up those houses. But their concern is too flat. It's just so well, I think I think I think we can up and then it'll move. I think we can, uh, you know, probably wait a month and get more information <laughs> so that you, you can do this again. I just remember from uh, last or well, one of the last sewer commission meetings I had we had here where I came in and I think uh, Laura maybe it was uh, somebody from the DPW and it was just like whoa, where did all these numbers come from? Or, and so this was just our way of just letting you know some of the upcoming costs and everything. Right. Yeah. And that's why even on some of these where uh, later on in the agenda, I say potential, because I just want just everybody to know what's, right. what we're trying to do and, and some of the costs. And, and they're, they're all over the map. I mean, we've even had sidewalk projects that are dumb. Mm -hmm. And then yet playground equipment, it was a little under budget. So it all depends what you're buying and like they say, the supply chain and demand for, for a product. So. Bill, I will say we very much appreciate you being here tonight. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no. Thanks. Just trying to, to make it clear because I'm, I'm always been so, a fan of, you know, the more informed you are, the better decision you can make. Right. That's, that's so, so can I put a, a, a motion on the table um, to 
act on a request for funding for Cardinal Engineering for plan updating utility coordination and revised bid document documentation for East Trunk Sewer totaling up to $30,000. Is there a second? Do we want to wait till we get more Hold information on. about the lateral? So, I mean, if we're making the decisions on the laterals tonight that we're not going to do it, I'll second it. If we're not making that decision tonight, okay. hold. so are we going to do the laterals or not? I'll, I'll call. Are we going to do the deep boring that I've been asking for? Yeah, yeah we should. Because <laughs> that's in here. And we should do the Can soil we that? And we should do the <laughs> soil testing on the houses, too. I want the, I want the borings more than I want A, B, C, or D in their thing. There's a motion on the table, and if I'll, I'll pull the motion if well, I want to. It's not seconded, second. so you don't have a motion on the table oh, I guess yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, you don't have a motion. Okay. Uh, I don't know how you do a project of this size and this magnitude <laughs> and not hook the people up. Just don't. I don't see it. it doesn't make sense. But no, it doesn't. Just me. That's what that's I'm thinking too. It's just I hear you. It was, I because it's seven true. people. There are and they're already in the foot or twelve people or whatever. Have you ever dealt with Save the Sound? <laughs> no, they're brutal. They got five attorneys or something. They are. And you know why they like Fairfield? Yes, we got money. But you know what? Yeah, I'm going to have to heal what the amount of money them. is for those seven houses right. total. I want, a, I want to design everybody's house, how it's going to be rerouted, and how much it's going to cost to put them on the street before I vote on this project. Are we going to do that? Who's who's responsible for that? I mean, honestly, I think first step would be they, somebody's got to go talk to the homeowners of all of those and get signatures saying that they would they would approve internal plumbing changes in their house to accommodate that. Because otherwise, it's dead on arrival. Under right. no, I, I tend to agree. I mean, I think right now, just we don't have the authority to go to somebody's a, house we're making and a in a vacuum. We don't know what yeah. the total cost. We don't have the right. full cost. Right. I mean, I if somebody will go and find out what that total cost is for those. Seven houses. Yeah, I mean, then, I can sympathize that the sound people might be difficult, but this isn't even within our jurisdiction. Yeah, the only thing, though, is it, would it be possible? Like, I'm just thinking I like, do more septics uh, on uh, where when it leaves the house, you wouldn't have to. Why would you have to go inside that if you get it right as it left the house? But it's going from the north side and we're going to the south side. Yeah, you have to. How are you getting it around? around? You have to bring it around. Right. right. You're digging up somebody's lawn or that's, you're literally going it. through the inside of their basement. Right. Yeah. Right, and we don't have authority to do either of those two things. We don't have an easement around yeah. their house. But again, if you're paying to for it, if I you still need their permission, no, they got they got permission. Got permission. you're paying for it. And I mean, I might not want you digging up my entire lawn. And or, I mean, there's a bunch of different reasons. Plus, I mean, having a pipe on the outside of your house, like even if it's underground and stuff, it might be in the way of I want to put in a pool or I want to do whatever. <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why somebody would. Why do I need an extra 60 feet of pipe that I have that I'm responsible for? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons why, that. why somebody would say no, let alone seven to 12 people. However, now I'll, I'll be. I don't know who would be able to I mean, yeah. no, notify the homeowners. But if nothing else, I think it's a, it's a good idea to, to notify them because if nothing else. If they are against it or they oppose it or whatever, at least that might be fuel for save the sound of, right. hey, we couldn't even get easements from these people. If you can get the easements, right, exactly. we'd be willing to do the work. Yeah, well, these are the current happen. homeowners also. Those properties, by the time this thing gets put into place, those properties will have switched, could potentially have switched. My last and time, might might be you might lose easement. that approval. You don't even know. You I don't, don't know. I don't so think there's a tomorrow. significant cost efficiency of having the laterals tied in at the time. Of Why don't you split the flow then? So, but that, and again, that was what... That's I can see the original plan. That's yeah. what yeah. That's yeah. the original we can do our project and then let them tie in the, or, or leave, like it, it, leave it on the road. Leave it. At least we're getting the main, main we'll say, ones from the two thirds. So sixty five percent of it yeah. is gonna yeah. go through yeah, the exactly. line and the other two percent. Yeah, yeah, we're eliminating yeah, exactly yeah. however much percent Just not flow around that pipe. creek. I mean it's we're it's the low hanging six and a half half a percent, but you know what I'm getting at. All righty then. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so <laughs> well, that's, that's I would, I would not talk to the homeowners yet. I think it's <laughs>
I just want to thank Sheila for staying with us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I mean, uh, so do we need the 30 seconds now for? That's completely separate. It is. It is. So that's yeah. I, well, I would not talk to the homeowners. I think that uh, it's premature to do that. And I think that uh, we're right, just looking for trouble. I, yeah. you know. We go, but, but either, we go bills I, but either way, we're, we need, you, you're going to want yes, funding for, for updating for utility for coordination and revised bid documents, not correct? Not yes. <laughs> so we're still going to want that. The laterals, I think, the laterals are a whole separate yeah, Matt issue. Matt makes a good point. We've got no jurisdiction to, to we say. Can't do we it. Gotta, you got to go and ask them first. Say, can we get into your house and start no. start researching what it is? I don't even want to do that. So, you know, but, but but then, when we put a road in, we put a road in that doesn't have any uh, uh, you know, laterals or whatever for a new development, let's say. Uh, I, you know, you, you put a ladder on the road and then they pay for connecting to the la to the ladder when they want. So if they've got a sewer system going on and they don't want to touch anything, you know, you just later on, you want to connect, fine, connect. I think we got to get our sides done and just put the yeah. ladders in front of those seven houses or whatever. And then if they want to connect, they can connect. You know, when we did a couple of houses around the corner down here of Duck Farm, they all bitched about the excavation, so you don't want to be on somebody's yeah, lawns cutting up everything and then find out later on they didn't like the way it was done. <sighs> Does anybody have a sense of where we go here? Uh, I'm gonna, I'll throw a motion out. I'll throw the same motion out there just so we can keep it moving forward with the thirty thousand. You know, I, I, I don't, you know, to. Uh, uh, to act a request for funding for Cardinal Engineering for plan updating utility coordination and revised bid documentations for East Trunk Sewer totaling up to $30,000. Is there a second? Okay, we're going to make, I'll make a second, but I want to modify it also. Okay. I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. One more clarification for Bill. So if we did the deep borings, and it turns out that trenchless is a viable option, you would still prefer to proceed with bidding the job as a trenched with the current design, throwing that in as additional information and creating an ad alternate to address the trenchless? That's, that's the way the director of public works and, okay. I, and I believe John, I don't want to put words in your mouth, uh, we're, we're, well, we're thinking of moving that way, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's. I just wanted to clarify mm -hmm. that because then I'm on board with. Okay. It. So, I'd like to modify the proposal to approve funding for Cardinal Engineering for full plan updating, utility coordination, deep borings, and revised bid documents for the East Trunk Sewer totaling up to forty-four thousand dollars. Second. Second from Matt. Comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't get my yeah. Aye. Ron's uh, unanimous. Nice work. I like that. I like that modification, Joe. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's that's D. We acted on we already acted on E, so that brings us to F. Window generator? Yeah, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. I know. No, we actually voted on. No, I don't think. No, we no, never did. There was a motion. <laughs> never got voted on. Yeah. Can I, hey, sorry, Mark. Their head, but they wasn't there a was, formal vote. There was never a formal <laughs> vote on E. So can I throw a motion out to consider? <laughs> it's to, still it's still on the table. Oh, sorry. Was, we had we had a motion that was There's seconded, seconded, never voted on. and we just didn't do the final vote right. on the generator. Yeah. Whose fault is that? <laughs> well, I don't know. We Who's shifted gear a bit. My Bill oh, walked in the room. Let's blame, that's let's blame it on Bill. Yeah. You can that's blame it on me. He started talking oh and we never finished. Uh, yeah. I think that, that was <laughs> yesterday, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got one more question. Uh, so we've got eight generators around town with a shelf life. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they 30 years before they come to the end of life. Oh. Yeah, pump, pump station. Uh, and but but the generators, you know, with, with, I mean, this this mobile would, would backfill those in the event. I mean, what 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 it's what it's there for is to offset 
rental that we wouldn't otherwise have to pay, essentially. Correct. So on average, each one comes to end of life just a little less than every 40 years if they're spaced out, every four years. So if you used to, you know, if you used that mobile for three months, as each one comes to end of life on average, it would essentially pay for itself in 20 years. I mean, is that a reasonable, that one comes to end of life, you need it for at least three months for the transition? Correct. All right. Yeah. Then it's paid for itself in 20 years. And that's not even factoring in. Without emergency rental. Right. Yeah. And that's not even factoring in the benefits of it from not having to worry about getting a rental. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. Understood. Yeah. Financially, it makes sense. And it's both. Yeah. Complete sense. And that doesn't take into consideration other benefits. Exactly. So, yeah. Okay. Let's vote. Let's not forget. Yeah. All in favor? All in favor? Unanimous. Excellent. Bringing us to F. This is marked as preliminary. I'm not quite sure what that means. It goes on to say to hear, consider, and act on a request for funding for the construction administration daily and specialized inspection and redesign services during construction for the Metro East Trunk Wetland Crossing. This would involve three firms and an estimate of $500,000. So this is a, a weighty one. What's the story here? Okay, I'll let you know. Preliminary meant that I didn't think you would vote on it today. We were just kind of giving it as a food for thought for the next meeting or whatever. Uh, this would be for the construction administration. Of uh, now, we're going to be talking about the East Trunk Metro Wetland Crossing project, and um, that one uh, there uh, is very close to being finalized and being able to be put out to bid. And so uh, now while it's being put out to bid, we need to make sure we have construction administration and inspection. So um, if everybody was got, I mean, I, and again, the, the estimate of 500,000 is because we haven't gotten any quotes. We haven't done any RFP or anything like that. As I mentioned before, uh, there may be advantages to hiring D and B, but going by the uh, director of public works uh, philosophy of not having that same company do that, we would have to get another company, Ty and Bond, Wright, P, whoever it might be, uh, to uh, inspect uh, the project. And uh, on that one there, uh, we had discussions with D and B and Lorero and um, what has happened is, in my um, opinion, with the three firms, one would do the daily, every day, go out there. Uh, then the specialized one would be with the um, uh, uh, micro, was it micro piles? Or I don't know My, it. So micro piles, basically geotechnical investigation and, 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 and overseeing the installation of micro piles. Files. And, and then that and then that one there according to the uh, building codes you should have somebody who's very experienced in that kind of uh, field and then the third firm would be the environmental because with that we have to actually there's only a small section of it but we have to involve the cap and so we have to basically hide Lorero again <laughs> to witness that the update on Lorero is I thought it was pretty good news but uh, I, we, I talked to George Andrews uh, yesterday, and he had mentioned that he was he would say to estimate about a week and a half, uh, a couple of days in the beginning of the project to just make sure that they don't excavate and rip the, the cap, and then at the end when they button it up, when they when they fold it back or they they merge it back, they would have to be there for that. Anything in between, they wouldn't have to be there, and then. He was estimating $500 samples and maybe having, you know, I was just saying, like every 50 feet or so. So if there's five or six of them, that would be another $3,000. And so putting it all together, you're probably in the $15,000 to $20,000 range for that, uh, we'll call it the environmental inspection. We're still working with D&B for an estimate of how long the micro piles would be, how long a, we'll call it a specialized inspection would be and then the daily inspection would be another firm where 
you know, they're watching them dig the hole and, and just making sure erosion, sediment control, and meeting the wetland permits and, and the things like that. specifications. Right, the following the specifications, exactly. Daily report. Now, that being all said, and uh, trying to think a little bit outside of the box and try to find some savings, uh, according to George Andrews, I was like, well, the, um, the other uh, accurate, that, that development that's going on at the Metro Center. But he said they already have somebody, or they they're they're um, scheduled to have somebody for that inspect that. So is there a way that maybe savings, like if they have to be there only four hours a day instead of eight, is there a way you know where if you go in and you watch the uh, contractor? And again, it's it's a, it's a question where do you really need to have there somebody there? I'll call twenty four seven, but every minute. During that, well, then that's full time inspection. Right. You get a higher quality, but obviously at well over a hundred, it's probably almost two hundred dollars an hour. And this project's going to be thirteen months. Just think of how the inspection costs are. But if it's one of those where the guy can go back, you know, the guy or uh, go back and forth, the inspector, and um, you know, uh, be able to report at least on some of the mundane stuff then maybe there's a cost savings there, or maybe there's a benefit to having the same company then, you know. So it's just something to look into uh, when we go to RFP, whoever that, whoever they're using, maybe give them a heads up that this contract is coming out. So it's just showing a way that we're all trying to save uh, costs. Sure. I don't think Mark sees you. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about expenses in the five to ten thousand dollar range, which all kind of seem to make a lot of sense. But we have a number of half a million dollars in front of us, which seems like a big that number. Inspection that was again two hundred dollars uh, two hundred dollars an hour every minute that the uh, contractor is there for thirteen months. Yeah. Joe, you had a question or a thought? No, I want. I wanted to know whether you wanted a motion on the table so we can discuss this item, or do you want to defer this item? And I, my other, if we get it on the table, my question to Mr. Hurley is the importance of this number and when it has to be approved, because this number obviously has to go to all the other boards and commissions, so that usually adds three months to uh, any of any of our approvals. So, do you want me to make a motion and put this on the table for discussion, or should we? defer this item to a date certain? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question, uh, Joe. Let, Bill, what's the answer to that? Um, again, uh, if you want a, a more definitive uh, number. I'm not worried about the number. Okay. I'm worried more about the time, time frame. The timing frame, is, it really amounts to when we can put the uh, thing out to bid. Yeah, we just have to line give up. comments to the NB, so it, we have to get back to them. As if you get back to them this week, then it should be ready to bid out. Yeah. And then really it's still going to take purchasing time. Or, right. Well, it's going to take, if you wait an approval, it's going to take right, months. two weeks or, or four weeks, you might be able, but I wouldn't go more than that. So yeah. if you yeah. now we, we, we have a new building going up there. So and we have a series of buildings going up there that are going to tap into this line. Mm -hmm. I mean, either you, you can make a motion of of up to, and obviously when we get the more information, if it only is 250,000 for some miracle, you know, you've kind of covered yourself and. Well, Bill, my, my concern is we approve 500, then we go to the other commissions and it turns out to be either 750 or 200. Right. Uh, we look, we look right. foolish. Well, then that, so, we, we, that is enough. So yeah, when will, you, when will you have this number locked? Down. I don't want to talk about this until we put this on the table. We, yeah, then we, then, then if that's the, that, that, and I, I don't, I don't mind. I, again, this was just trying to. Yes, I, under, I understand what you're trying um, to do. I would say once we find that information out from D and B of really what what would be required here, and then would we need the full in, inspection or not? Now, yeah, if it's a bridge project, you, you have the full inspection. Right. If there's a grant involved, and that was somebody brought that up, we might have to have the full inspection. If it's our own project, you know, and I'll use the example of a sidewalk project. We, you know, if it's our own sidewalk project, we have somebody go out there an hour or two a day. It doesn't have to be all the time. But when there's grants involved or a major project, you may want to, but you're going to pay for that. Okay. 
I'd like to make a motion to put it on the table so we can discuss it then. Yeah, uh, I, second from Matt. Discussion. Okay. If we approve it tonight, and it has to go to, and it will have to go to, if we approve this number tonight, which doesn't sound like we've got a solid number, but it's That's a good. number, mm -hmm. and it has to go to Selectman, Board of Finance, and RTM. Uh, it's October with Christmas, with everything. We won't have the approval back until February. Isn't that mm. we're supposed to do it in November, the bidding out as per our schedule? Like, I'm just trying to get Okay, if that's the case and you've, you're looking for a bid well, in we November, haven't, we haven't gotten the construction you're not going to get money. it done. Right? Right? We haven't approved on. the construction money, so... Um, How much is the construction money? Uh, that's... That that's one is... <laughs> 700, 700. Yeah, 700. No, no, that one, that was... Oh, the, that's just um, administration. <laughs> yeah, that was just, yeah, the 500, that was just administration. Let, like, let me, like, let me get, uh, let me get this one out. Right. It's, uh, that was the 5 million, remember? Uh, they gave us, we're talking 5 million, by five, the way. 5 million, like, 5. Like, for 5 what? million, 5 is the total project. Yes, that would be yeah, it. For so, wetland crossing, it was... Not to put the cart before the horse, we don't even know where that's coming from. Do we? D and B's provided us with a cost estimate. Yeah, no, but where, where are we getting the money from? Right. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come out of the fund balance. It's going to have to be bonded. Right. It's on the waterfall. Yeah, that's twenty-four twenty-five. Twenty-four twenty-five. But it, when they bond it, they'll they'll bond it in fiscal year twenty-four at the earliest. Oh, I see. We're, talking, we're still talking about the wetlands, right? Yeah, this yeah. is the wetlands one. Well, there, there, well, there was one other caveat. Again, it's um, you might remember for the East Trunk Line, there was a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar community economic grant. They were uh, idea there that we're going to transfer that to this wetland crossing, mm -hmm. thinking that this one was a little ahead of the right. East Trunk. Right. And we thought when we first started this project, we thought it was around one one point four million. Then it was two point four, and then. Again, about three days ago, we got hit with it could be up to five million. Now that five million kind of scares me, but when you look at this is a company where I think they've added they've added contingencies, they've added uh, I mean they were even having ninety thousand dollars of allowance of a field office. So there's a lot of things in there that we might be able to. Uh, I think it'd be crazy to think it'd only be two point five, but it's probably somewhere in the middle. But the five million, I think, was. I hate to use the term, but you know, CYA, where they didn't want to get caught with uh, the way the prices are. They wanted to at least say, oh, we're within our range or in our budget. But it, it's probably somewhere between the 2.5. And again, we wouldn't know that. And that's been a question that I can ask uh, our uh, finance director and, and the first select woman uh, when it comes to these projects. Yeah, and the Board of Finance, even. is it better to try to bid them at, at least if we, because if we could at least say that this board approved, at least then, you know, we can say, you know, but the town hasn't yet, but at least we'd say there's been some approvals, and then you put the thing out to bid, and then we get the number, then it's a lot easier to go and throw a 10% contingency or 15%, and then, then we have the numbers at least for the bid. Or we say three million or five million, but we don't really know what the number is until you bid it out. So th th that's a question I can ask internally. You know, it, 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 or, uh, or just um, just I got one thing on the the grants that we're getting. The grants that we're getting are we uh, is there any stipulations where are, are we bidding out um, prevailing wage and certain things anyways in our in our bid. Yeah, these, these, so it's these all, are meets, all over four hundred thousand so it, it all meets always, that yeah, grant yeah, what yeah, you do. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So at least all the all the stuff that we're getting in now for the right. estimates are kind of saying, okay, well when we get the grant we're gonna have to do right. all the rigor morale. And for that. the East Trunk wetland now trans we got the approval, I believe Mark Barhart got the approval to extend it one more year, which is now like the fourth year. So we have only got to May twenty twenty four just to chime in with the schedule. This is what is the anticipated schedule for Wetland Crossing East Trunk uh, bidding in November and mm. then award will be in December. Award to the contractor and mid to March 2023 is the construction start. These are the anticipated 
a timeline for this project. And, and Mark has extended based on this what we have given him for the grant. So it's till May 2024 that we said approximately one year will work. So take to complete. So just to put it that in, in, in our notes that this is what we have anticipated. So hopefully this is not affecting because Mark has taken one year extension based on this. So did you say March 2023 NTP? Um, mid to March 2023 is the construction start date, anticipated construction start date for this project. Is that possible with an with well, award in December? Well, if we go for bidding in November and if the award in December, then mid to March 20th, yes. okay. as per our, all our conversations with OSA. Can we get the construction funded in that amount of time? Well, that's... That's where uh, that's where I was going back to. Did it? You know, we can say this board approved it, commission approved it, right. and we're working our way as it's going out to bid. Um, but then as again, it's different. Unfortunately, it all depends who the purchase agent, who the finance. Because some some people will say you could put the thing out to bid and get a final number. That's the best way. And then others like we're going to put out a project where the uh, contractors are going to spend several days coming up with the numbers and calc and then find out the town didn't approve it, they get really pissed. And on, this did happen uh, on Duck Farm because it was involved in granting the DOT and one of the permits was a, a general permit, which usually means rubber stamp, but the general permit just happened to expire and it was at the, near the end of co and so it created all sorts of stuff and it delayed the project uh, several months. And then we couldn't award it until we got that approval. And so it was, actually we couldn't, we couldn't, we had to keep on extending the bid opening date, I'm sorry, until we got that approval. So you, you wanna make sure you have all your permits in place and at least some sort of funding mechanism. That's still the way it is, which if that's the case, then I would probably say the bid and the award is probably gonna be pushed back a month. But, um, Usually the RTM will stay, everybody still meets in December, but it will be early, you know, by December 15th, they want to usually be, be done with it. So we would have to, um, we'd have to act on this fairly yeah. quickly. So because of the extension nice. deadline for the grant, that's more mm -hmm. taken. So we have to be within that time frame. Oh, right. Oh, right. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Um, is there... Is there a, a consensus amongst the board, the commission, on going forward on this? A uh, couple more questions. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> this is all confusing, of course. It's like eight, right. what, eight different things on the agenda. So is the is the time frame consolidated for the inspectors? And I'm I'm just wondering when. So we don't have an RFP out for that yet either. That's not going to go out. RFP for inspectors? Or are we just no. sole source? No. Okay. No, we don't. Uh, now, we do have, though, a uh, bid opening, I believe, for construction inspection that they did a QBS on. Oh, okay. And so at least we have that part. So yeah. we would then ask, say, three firms for proposals. Okay. So it's a little bit shorter. They, they have that. Okay. So, we're halfway there. Uh, Are there currently any requirements on any of the funding that we have for this that would require the full-time inspection? I like the idea of the shared inspector for the general. Uh, again, I, I have to you look at the have. details on that. Um, uh, but we're getting no five million. I think we'd gladly pay the other hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean for that. If if we were to get it. Um, uh, but then, yeah, that those are those are definitely valid questions. Because that also could impact the not to exceed number. Yeah. Well, and also if, yeah. if we say 500 and then we're also willing to go part-time right. inspector, then right. of course we could stay under 500. Well, that's why I said so. up to. Right. Exactly. I mean, the other thing you could possibly do is you at least vote, get it started, and oh, obviously we, when we get the, the if we can get the number before we go to the board of selectmen, you know, concurrently whether your next meeting falls in that same group. You can quote revote or whatever if it went up or right. if it went down a little bit, uh, or you could have a special meeting, maybe even just by WebEx or Zoom or something, for 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 the actual number. Right. I'm just trying to help move yeah. it along. Uh, whatever you guys want to do. Last question. Um, 
specialty inspection. So you said basically regular inspection, specialty, and, and environmental. And it sounded like specialty, we would probably go with CNB. Uh, probably, but not definitely. But that, okay. yeah. And regardless of whether or not they're doing specialty inspection, are they already on the hook for a shop drawing review and RFIs and? Uh, I think I think that yeah, well, I have to look at the the actual scope on that. Sometimes they do it that way, and other times they just wait until okay. Uh, the um, you know, in the hopes of getting the inspection. Right. You know? um, not that that's as big as the other two buckets, but obviously if it's not already in there, we mm -hmm. want to make sure it's included. Mm -hmm. I'm then it's a, theoretically that it could be even a fourth. Right. You know, yeah. Exactly. If we. But I, I would like to think on that one, if they're only inspecting the piles and, and we'll say one other, then I can, I'll try to talk to, you know, the powers to be that say that it's better just to have them and we'll combine, just like you said, right. the design services, shop drawings, and then therefore we don't deal with a fourth firm, you know. Yeah. Because then that would ruin my Bermuda Triangle theory because now I'd have to come up with some other. If we don't know. <laughs> you know, the blame game. Are we likely to get better numbers by the next meeting of this commission? Uh, we hope to. Uh, get, um, I'll get we'll, the... We'll talk to the uh, consultants, yeah. at least get a range, and then, uh, again, depending on the selection and, and who we get. Because yeah. we is actually anticipating that they will be doing... They don't know if they will be hiring somebody else. No, uh, we're going to tell them that we yes, might so that they, we get a lower they, price. That's they why they think are they're the only game in that way. Right. To that. Mm -hmm. still and Bill, you own this project, right? This is your number one priority? Um, yes. Oh, grand. Okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I say all the time. Put that in the minutes. In his own words. For deadline of a grand. <laughs> well, number one, priority. it is a priority, it is, but yeah. It's, it's, it is extending a grand deadline every time, so you have to. Kind of priority. I know it's it's been a long but I do think so far this has been productive. I, I think we think we're moving forward. So I uh, appreciate everybody's time and patience here. So. All right, so I know it's really just a matter of whether you want to go for that. Any other questions? All right, we, we have a second. Let's bring it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. Bill, you're going to be sitting next to me at all these meetings, aren't you? <laughs> well, you know, I had two meetings today at the same time. Okay, we we have a uh, uh, a similar um, situation in G. Um, Mark preliminary, but we could potentially act on and consider a request for funding for the construction administration daily and specialized inspection and redesign services during construction for the East Trunk sewer line. Um, we've, we've had some conversation on this. Um, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Is there anything new to add? Yeah, I, I actually do. Uh, based yeah. on that you were going to do deep borings and some other, um, uh, uh, extra things. I think on this one, you probably could wait a month, but I wouldn't wait longer than that. But I think you could probably wait a, a month on on this one. Yeah. I, I don't think this is ready to go out to bid in, within the next month. I, um, I, does anyone disagree with that? No. <laughs> Joe. I'd like to make a motion to move item G to a date certain of our November meeting. Okay. Second. Second. Second from uh, who was that, Tom? Everybody, or Ron? Everybody else. All in favor? Uh, <laughs> Unanimous. Okay. And um, and then H, we have future construction estimates of $5 million and 8 to 10. I think we've fully covered that. Hi. Right. Again, just trying to give you a heads up so that you don't get blindsided. So. Yeah, I, I'm particularly interested in the soil remediation cost on the East Trunk sewer line, but we'll get some more information on that through tie and bond. Um, moving on, moving has, on to has the commission seen the tie and bond report, or, or where they uh, 
I'll, I'll, I'll plug that out, and if you haven't received it... Have I uh, seen it? I, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know. I I'll usually, I'm I'll sure it was, but the the old one going on. on. Like eight eight months ago? Yeah. Bill, I'm, I'm just curious, if it, if it costs us $250,000 to move the dirt from the, um, from the Easton uh, Turnpike pump station, what's the what's what's a back of the envelope estimate for the, the yeah yeah. Oh, yeah yeah for the for the remediation for the for the contaminated soil um i i have i think time bond did provide yeah. some information the bodies the and they did give like a, a dollars per ton and how many or you know tons of cubic yards that they estimated mm -hmm. would need to be yeah. Uh, transported, yeah. and um, the number wasn't too too bad. I'm gonna really just off the top of my head say it was like eighteen thousand or something. It really wasn't too bad because, as I said, of the twenty tests, there were two, yeah. so it wasn't wasn't too bad. And you know, I mean, uh, if yeah. if you've been over there, I mean, that's a heavy industrial part of town. Yeah, I I don't disagree. The only thing maybe is that the road was there already and when you want to dispose of stuff it's easier maybe to put it in a in a, in a wetland or on the side of the road than actually under the road all you know it's all what it asked for they're putting it behind yeah, it. yeah. I'm, I'm just that's just theoretical uh, the I other is give it line it's 25 feet down they would have put it like three feet under yeah, yeah. you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's what we're hoping for, but yeah, it, it's industrial, but then it becomes uh, residential. So uh, in the hopes there, uh, once we're halfway through Kenwood, I'm, I'm hoping, yeah. but we, we, you know, Bill or we, Bill or Matt, let me ask you a question. When you're digging down 25 feet, all that dirt that you dig up, and then you're going to put it back down on top of the pipe, do you have to test that dirt before you put it back in the ground? I offhand, I don't know. What I would say is it probably would be a good idea to at least do a couple of tests just to verify, but I, confirm. And obviously, if there was something to be seen, you know, then, you know, we, we would have to. But it, what is, what soil is, sampling is usually, what, like one every 500 feet or something like well, that? Well, it depends I because so. because isn't that what um tie, what we're paying $7,500 for tie and bond to do is that they're going to put putting together this yeah. report and the specs. So I'm assuming they're going to say wherever the spikes are, they're going to say from station right. 750 yeah, to spot. station 850, right. you're going to have to have, you're going to have to do three, three soil tests within the, within the spoils there. And then we'll determine it from there. So I think that's probably what I would think we're going to know more when they put the, when we spend the seventy five hundred dollars for them to do that. Then we yeah. can define it a little bit better. Good point. But if it's not if it's not in the soils and we can prove it, I don't think there. Are, if it's not in the construction documents, I think it would just go right through and they could put it right back, unless it's specifically labeled. They did that at the Harding project. They checked the soil and whatever was clean was able to go right back. back. So. So I think we're pretty well defined, especially with the tie and bond soil soils that they did. They've did a, they've done a bunch, and once we get the report, I'm, we should look through it and make sure it's noted in there for the contractor. Yeah, yeah compaction testing is always required from a geotech, but I don't think soil sampling is always. It's not like a blanket always required type no. of thing. Unless, unless, okay. Unless it's, which way it is. Right. Exactly. So you're right. Tie and bond should be. Able Again, to when we do a drainage project. Years ago, we would just do it, and if it was noticeable or you, right. just, yeah. you, you had a smell to it, a color to it, then and you get it tested. Exactly. If not, you kind of put it back in. Unfortunately, as you know from all the other nonsense, I think it would be at least a good idea to at least do a couple anyway, okay. if we did, just to, again, say, well, we tested three times. They all came out positive. There, were, there was no change in the soil condition. There was no need to do any more, but at least do a couple. It's probably yeah. a good idea. I'm okay, sure let's, have move, let's move on to old business. We have the digester update under 4A. What's the update there, John? Oh, that would mean that we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you're certainly invited to stay uh, and listen. Okay. Well, they okay. started dewatering Thank today. You. Finally. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. 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 Thank
<clears throat> I think he's past that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm already in the hot seat. I'm right, already for the commission. <laughs> Digester update. They started dewatering today, finally, after all the hoopla. So. Any up update on the insurance claim? Nope. That That's probably good. They're not going to pay any of this. I think it's all going to come to when they do the construction or the repair. Okay. Pool water, dis pool water discharge policy, nothing. I reached out to Sacred Heart a couple of times, no return call, so I'm not sure where we are with that. I mean, I don't know what they plan on doing. Okay. So we're not going to do this policy just based on Sacred Heart. No. All the pools in town. Correct. But then, and, and so do we need to, I mean, do I, you said we weren't waiting on them, but that's just a piece of the puzzle, right? Yeah, I mean, the YMCA has their protocol in place, and they've been doing it forever, and so. It all depends on how far we want to, do we want to make a policy without input from everybody? And do we know how many pools there are in town? I mean, Fairfield U has one. I mean, we're talking about also homeowners have pools. Right, that they homeowners are under different, 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 different jurisdictions, different set of rules for homeowners. What's that? Yeah, must gallonage. But not all chlorine either. So but so still, we, if we are creating a pool policy, wouldn't we let the homeowners also drain into the no, system. no, because the pool, the, the homeowners can already have a policy under the town that just they let it. They put it in the drainage. Yeah. So we're only looking at what a commercial yeah. pool policy, yeah. basically. Right. So only because cool. only because Sacred Heart came to us saying that they had some kind of system to discharge to the pump station. That's what started the whole the whole ball rolling. So. I haven't talked to anybody else. I mean, the YMCA, like I said, the YMCA is happy to do what they do. And so we got Fairfield U, Sacred Heart, the Y. And then there's one. Does the high school have a pool? No. Oh. And then yeah. there's a place on Black Rock Turnpike. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the yeah. Angels are. Yeah, but, I'm not sure why, don't, why don't we get some feedback from Sacred Heart and then give some thought to a policy? I don't think we're going to craft one at 10 after 9 right. tonight. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, God. No, what does YMCA do? Want to go on the back parking lot? An yeah. update. Update on the current projects, other than the ones we discussed, is is there anything of note, John? The hardening project's not complete yet. They're, they they have to wait. The project. In order to close it out, they have to finish the pump station behind conservation. Until the microgrid project's done, they're not going to finish that. And the microgrid's still waiting on a transformer that's coming in December. And that's. That's the update on current projects. There were no sewer bypass. I, I know I don't want to ask this question, but I am anyway. Yes. How is Carriage Drive? What's going on there? You should ask the man sitting right there because it hasn't gone out to bid yet. It hasn't gone out to bid. No. That tells me a lot. Okay. No. If I was with people, I'd be jumping up. Oh, gosh. And they are. Oh, okay. What's, what are they saying, John? Oh, this could this should have been done oh, a year ago. <laughs> Is that all they're saying? Then it's okay. <laughs> they're saying more than that. The corner pre prevents any other further <laughs> wording. So we live and we learn from carriage drive. No, no sort of like that. I don't know if you caught that. Okay. Um, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Motion from Matt. Second from Tom. All in favor. Aye. Sheila, thanks for staying with us. God bless you.